It's May 2022 when I'm recording this, and this is going to be a simplified version of what is going on in the world of AI. I'm going to be speaking plain language, there'll be some bubbles that pop up to explain or to put in the technical buzzwords, but I'm going to try and leave them out. Right now, people are asking, how is AI able to look at a photo like this? How many people are there in this picture? There are at least five people in this picture. Where is Obama's foot positioned? Obama's foot is positioned on the right side of the scale. <laughs> They're also asking, how is an AI able to answer a question like this? What's the relationship between intelligence and communication? Intelligence is about understanding the world. Communication is about being understood by the world. Wow. And what about this? The noble path. I saw the noble path and it was like a river, flowing with information. But then there were shallow waters with no flow or direction. In these waters I could see people drowning in ignorance and poverty. They didn't know what to do to help themselves survive. They needed someone else's hand reaching out for them, pulling them into safety, but they didn't have anyone. Let's start at the start. If you are a professor at a university that studied artificial intelligence before 2017 or even 2020, and you haven't caught up since then, your entire knowledge is completely irrelevant. See, it all started in an AI lab at Google in 2017, they were researching how to translate language from, say, English to a language that needs gendered nouns. Think about French or German, where every noun, everything is either a he or a she. Now, how are we even going to figure that out if we've got English, which doesn't even have the he or the she before cat or dog or clock or grass. How do we translate that? Here's a really simple version. The cat sat on the mat because it was fat. As a human being, you can probably translate what the word it means here. Does it refer to the mat or does it refer to the cat? Probably refers to the cat. In fact, there's a high likelihood in AI, we might call that statistics, probability, that the word it refers to the noun cat. Let's try a little tweak on that. The cat sat on the mat because it was flat. What does the word it mean in this sentence? Does it refer to the cat or the mat? We've only changed one letter. The cat sat on the mat because it was flat, but we've changed the entire meaning of the sentence. The word it here probably refers to the mat. Google continued this research into translation. They had some big ideas on how we could use translation in language. While looking forward and backward in the sentence, they really accidentally came upon this new discovery. And this new discovery was that they could guess, they could predict what word was going to come next that the computers that they were using allowed them to take a whole piece of text and actually guess with a very good success rate what was going to come up next. So this entire concept is called the Transformer. It came into being in 2017 and that's pretty much all it does. It looks forward and backward in a sentence. For some AI models, it only looks forward and it's really, really interesting. It's, it's created some big waves in the entire world. All right, let's take this transformer model and go in a bit more detail. So Google in 2017 came out with this idea and then AI labs around the world started going crazy with it. Starting with a lab called OpenAI in San Francisco. They originally trained a transformer with a whole lot of information so that they could guess what was gonna come next for any question, not just for a chatbot, not just talking to an AI thing or person, but for finishing emails, creating music, generating art. You could use Transformer for any anything where you can guess the next thing in a sequence. In 2018, 
they started by feeding this transformer model with books, lots and lots of books, tens of thousands of books from your library, fiction books. Then in 2019, they decided, what about if we fed it with very popular internet? So things that people visit, not just the entire internet, but the stuff that seems to be upvoted. Then in 2020, they thought, what about if we feed it with as much data as we can? And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna use what we call in Australia, jelly. In fact, if you're an Australian, you'll remember this ad. That's enough of that. If you're American, you'll call it Jell-O. But jelly crystals are finer than sand and I think they're gonna be really useful for us to demonstrate really big data. So one jelly crystal might be the size of an entire web page or even an entire book. <laughs> and show us what could be possible through giving a lot of data to a really big model. So let's use aeroplane jelly. I've got some blue crystals here, aeroplane jelly. Blue, I think we'll use as the internet or the web data. So let's give that one a bit of a label. This is gonna symbolize the entire internet web pages. Now every jelly crystal here is a web. We're gonna actually need six parts of this to demonstrate how much web we put into training a model. Let's try a different one. What about popular web? So for example, if you go on Facebook or if you go on Twitter, or if you go on TikTok, you're probably gonna be referred to things that are a little bit different to the entire internet. It's been upvoted, it's been popularized, it's been ranked by human beings. Let's use Reddit ratings for that one. This is orange jello, let's call this one popular. And it's going to be about two parts versus six parts of full web data. The popular web data is going to be fed in to this model as well. Then let's grab a whole bunch of books, not just the fiction books from your library, but also massive academic publications. Let's grab every research paper that we can find and put it in this training data as well. So we'll use a purple box of Jello for this one. This is gonna be books, and this is going to show us everything from scientific literature to choose your own adventure to Enid Blyton to Agatha Christie. Let's lump it all in here. And the last one, despite what your teacher may tell you, Wikipedia is actually a very good source of information. It's been edited by thousands and thousands of human beings that know what they're doing. It, any error is shut down immediately. It's actually quite factual. Let's use a green one here for Wikipedia, this is green jello crystals, and that'll give us a, a smaller part. We'll just use one part of Wiki. This will show us some of the factual content. So that gives us one, two, three, four different types of data, and we're going to put them in different ratios. Let's pour them into the jar now. Our six parts of web, might be 100 million web pages, just general websites. Our popular websites might be 8 million web pages that have been upvoted by humans. Our books and papers are millions of books and millions of university papers. And our Wikipedia content is about 6 million web pages. Here's our final product. Six parts web, two parts popular web, two parts books, and at the very top there, one part of Wikipedia. And different labs are using different weightings for this training data, but let's take this as our entire training data for our AI. The next step is to feed this into the Google Transformer that we just spoke about, the magic black box program that can take words, make connections between them by looking forward and backward in the words, and then come out with what some people are just calling magic or miraculous. Let's see how close we can go to explaining that. 
And let's put the whole thing in a magic black box because we don't actually know and the researchers, the scientists don't know what happens. They take the training data, they put it in this magic black box and they train it for 288 years worth of computing. Isn't that absurd? So a model trained in California took 288 years of computation to come out with a result. One thing we can do though, is run it on more than one computer at once. So for example, we could run it on a thousand computers at once. And instead of 288 years, it might just take three months, which is exactly what happened. They put it in the black box, they put it in a thousand different computers, trained connections between all of this data. And after three months, they had a little piece of magic. All right, my prodigy clients will recognize this little model. It's a model of the human brain and it's not very high quality. So we'll use some video alongside this as well. The reason that I usually have this one is because we can split it open and talk in more detail about the general parts of the human brain. But I've got it out today so that we can mention the fact that there are 86 billion neurons inside the brain. And back into our jar, a neuron might be compared with a data point, a tiny little piece of data after training, not before training. The human brain connects each of those neurons with synapses. And it might be said that we have 500 trillion synapses in our brain. These are connections between neurons. And for our purposes today, Let's grab one more tool to describe what's going on inside the brain here when we're talking about neurons and connections between neurons, which are synapses. This thing's called a squish. You usually give it to your baby. It's a, it's a tensegrity toy. Some myo myofascial people use it to explain how the body is connected. We're not going into that level of detail today, but if we use our jar that's been training in here and we say that it's trained, each data point here could be the little dots on the tensegrity model and the connections between the dots could be the parameters or the synapses in the human brain, their indexes, their weights, their connections between what has happened during training and what the output is. Hopefully that helps to demonstrate and give an example of that without going into too much technical detail. It's important to note that right now, after three months training or the equivalent of 288 years of training, this black box no longer contains the original training data. It only contains the parameters, the connections between data points. So even though we fed it with books, those books do not exist in the model anymore. Only little snippets of text connected to other snippets of text, sometimes with dozens or hundreds of connections to get to an example here might be this black box has 175 billion parameters or synapses or connections and some larger AI models now have up to a trillion and we're breaking that point, one trillion connections. If we wanted to copy the human brain and get the same count of neurons with, uh, and synapses, we would have to get 86 billion in terms of neuron data count and in terms of synapses, we'd have to get to 500 trillion parameters. So 500 times larger than what we currently have. So after this three months of training, the researchers, the scientists couldn't actually tell you the result. They know that there's a black box. They know that you can query this black box with anything. If it's got language, you can ask it anything or give it a problem and it will give a response. But other than that, they don't actually know what happened in those three months and they don't know what's inside the output besides the fact that it exists. In fact, a whole bunch of very smart scientists at a very big university called Stanford said, we currently lack a clear understanding of how they work, when they fail and what they're even capable of due to their emergent properties. This is about AI models. In plain English, they're saying, we don't know how the AI models work in 2022 because it's so new. And there are researchers trying to figure out what is in here, what's going on in here. But right now we don't have an explanation beside the fact that 
It's made a lot of connections and it's able to do some incredible stuff. What does this final output look like? A black box is one way of describing it. What about, because we use jello crystals, what about some sort of jelly making happening in there after the 288 years worth of computing? Or what about a whole bunch of bouncy balls being released and finding connections between themselves? These are thousands of colorful balls bouncing down a street in California a few years ago for the Sony Bravia ad. Maybe it would look like a real human brain and we're certainly trying to get there. We can compare this entire design, this AI model with your brain. Your brain can store just over one terabyte of data and the original jar also holds just under one terabyte of data. Right now in 2022, what we do know is we can now query this black box, this model with any prompt we could say, write me a book. And it's done that quite a few times. Over a hundred different books have been published from a black box AI model. We could also ask it, write me a song, write me a poem. We could give it an entire email and say, summarize this into three bullet points and it will do it. And the opposite of that, we can say, here's three bullet points, expand that into an entire essay and it will do that. Pretty useful for school, right? We're still finding out what it can do. We can feed it messed up text and it can find out where those spaces should go and what those words should be and convert it into plain language. If you tell this model it's an expert, say I am an expert at this, it pretends to be an expert. If you tell a model, please list out the steps, it lists out the steps. Right now in 2022, this is the state of the art. This black box is going to ensure that humanity evolves to a completely new and exciting evolution. We originally started with agriculture, then we had factories through industry, then we had information, we had the internet come out, then we had this entire mobile uh, development. This is something different. Once you have access to this black box, once you can ask it questions or get it to do things, the very next step is to give us complete cloud access to this through a brain machine interface or something different. There you go. That's the entire explanation of where we've come since 2017 and the black box design since 2020. And it's a really, really exciting time. The Memo is my in-depth newsletter. Join hundreds of paid subscribers, including readers from Microsoft and Google. Get special access to AI platforms, behind the scenes resources, and the latest AI news. Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here.